Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. I want to start though by asking you this question. What is a knife that is a real grail knife for you or was a real grail knife for you that you ended up being able to get a hold of, okay? Uh, and I'm sure there are tons of you out there that, that looked for a knife and maybe it was one that, you know, was just sold out everywhere. They weren't making any more and you're like, I'll probably never be able to get one even though I really want one. Uh, maybe it was too expensive, maybe they're, they're not widely available or they only make them in limited runs or maybe, you know, for any number of reasons we can like a knife and just not be able to get a hold of it. Uh, but I'd really like to hear from you if you were able to get one, okay? Because this is a knife that fits that category for me. This is the Custom Knife Factory Decepticon 3. And if you remember, not that long ago I made a video called Admired From Afar where I just talked about knives that... Uh, I really like, but will likely never own, right? I'll just get to look at pictures and, and maybe read articles and watch a couple of YouTube, rev YouTube reviews and that's gonna be about it. Uh, then they listed this, the Decepticon 3. Now there was a Decepticon 1, Decepticon 2, this is number three. Um, and when they did, they came in at, at a much lower price point than the, than the first two uh, came were listed at. Uh, and that combined with the fact that you guys uh, responded really well to a for sale video that I put up and bought a bunch of knives uh, meant that I was able to go ahead and pick one of these up. And I did get it from, uh, from Russia with knives. I didn't want to wait until they were available at uh, US or, well, they're not going to be at Canadian retailers, let's be honest. Uh, but I didn't want to wait till they were available in North America. Got this straight from Russia. In fact, the shipping was only like 10 days. I've waited longer for knives from the US than I waited to get this from Russia. So uh, really, really good on the logistics there. And if you are worried about that, um, my experience was absolutely fine. Now, some people did say you can't order from Custom Knife Factory. They don't have a, a Canadian option, uh, which I don't know. I, I've never tried, uh, but I did get this from Russia with knives and they, you know, there was just a drop down menu. You could hit Canada, no problem. Uh, everything was fine. It came through customs just fine. Uh, so that's my, that's my story leading up to how I ended up getting this knife. And I will say it is a very, very cool knife. Now, it's not going to be for everybody. I understand the looks are fairly distinctive on this. The price point is is more than uh, some people are going to want to be interested in hitting. Um, now, if you're into custom knives, okay, then and you're used to paying those prices, then this is maybe a bit of a bargain for you. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get into the size and weight. And then uh, this is a knife, of course, that we want to take a really close look at. So we'll go over to the, the tabletop. But before we do that, size and weight on this overall size is nine and one eighth inches. The blade is just over like a sixteenth of an inch over four inches. The handle is pretty much right on five inches. It's a little more than half an inch thick. It looks thick and it, as you hold it in hand, it kind of feels like it should be a thicker knife because of the multiple layers. Uh, but when you actually measure it, it's only uh, just a fraction over a half an inch thick. So not that bad at all. Uh, and this weighs in at 5.2 ounces, which again for a nine and one eighth inch knife is not that bad. Um, Consider that, uh, you know, when, this, when you carry this in pocket, and I have carried this a fair bit in pocket, it's been my, my kind of go-to church knife. Um, it is quite comfortable, it carries really nicely and easily. Uh, and of course, I find the blade to be quite functional, so it's nice as a carry knife, uh, because if you do need to do some cutting tasks, it, it works really, really well. So that's the other aspect of this knife, is it's, it's definitely a piece of artwork, there's no question about that. Uh, but it's a piece of artwork that will cut stuff, which is pretty cool. All right, so now that you've got the size and weight and a bit of a, a general introduction here, let's go ahead and move over to a closer view of this very awesome Custom Knife Factory DCPT3. All right, guys, so here we are nice and close in on this uh, Custom Knife Factory Decepticon 3 or DCPT3 and we're going to go over the details starting with the blade the way that we normally do. So this blade is M390 steel. It has a very high flat grind, sort of a modified sheep's foot blade shape. Uh, and I've got to say that in terms of actual cutting performance, this thing is excellent. You know, you've got the edge retention and corrosion resistant properties of M390. You've also got an extremely thin edge. Out of all the knives in my collection, this is one of the thinnest edges. And so this thing slices like crazy. And you can see how thin, how small that secondary bevel is. And that's because there's very little metal down here. So this really, really slices like 
unbelievably well. Um, I wouldn't want to put this through any kind of hard use, any kind of torsional, you know, prying stuff is not going to be good for this blade because it is fairly thin. Uh, but, I mean, who's going to do that with this knife anyway? All right, uh, I have been carrying this, but I'll carry it on days where I'm not planning on uh, chopping down any trees or anything like that with my EDC knife for the day. Uh, <clears throat> So M390 steel, very thin grind, uh, really nice stone wash on this. And so this is sort of a moderate stone wash where it's not so aggressive that it completely takes away any shine from the steel. Uh, I'm still a little favorable towards satin finishes, but I don't think a satin finish would work that well on this knife. Uh, the, the stone wash definitely ties everything together well in terms of uh, the way the blade and the handle kind of go. Uh, there is this hole in the blade and it's really just aesthetic. If, if you, when you see the knife close, you'll see that you can't even, you're not going to access that with your finger at all for deployment. Uh, it's purely there maybe to save a little weight. Uh, and for aesthetic purposes. So in terms of um, usefulness on this blade, it's really, really nice. And I've got quite a bit of use out of it. And it, it does slice like crazy with that high flat grind and very thin edge. So uh, definitely no complaints about the performance on that blade. Let's move on to lockup and deployment. There are a few things that are worth noticing here. Uh, first of all, you can see the, the way this is constructed, there's this nice combination of uh, the screws here and you've got just a slot screwdriver or a slot hole there that's just slightly offset. Well, let's bring it in a little closer there. Uh, so, uh, works really well. And this was a knife that when I, the first few weeks, I didn't, I never, I never mess with a pivot the first few weeks other than maybe to tighten it if there's blade play, but I don't lock tight it or anything to kind of let the knife break in. And that during that time, this is a knife that would come loose. You can see that there's nothing restraining this, just round. Uh, so there's no shape to that uh, pivot screw that's going to keep it from moving on you and it will move. So this has got some plumber's tape on it. And after I did that, uh, I've never had a problem. Uh, <clears throat> it is very, very smooth. So uh, it's just really, really, you cannot feel the ball bearings at all. It's just very, just the right amount of friction so that the knife comes closed just as you'd want it to uh, and flips very well. So really, really well done on um, the, the action on this. It's just smooth and fast and, and it just feels like quality. So really, really impressive that. Uh, in that area of, of the construction. Uh, the lock, of course, is a liner lock. Okay, I know you'd almost want to call it a frame lock, but uh, no, there are definitely titanium scales here with titanium liners, so it is a liner lock. And let me come in close. There you go, you can see the, the lock bar insert right there. So there is a, a hardened steel lock bar insert, so you're not dealing with uh, the titanium interfacing on the blade tang. Uh, and so that's going to save a little bit of wear and I guess theoretically that lock bar insert would be replaceable if you'd ever get to that point. Uh, I don't really know, but certainly if it did, you could cert you could go ahead and, and get a new insert from Custom Knife Factory, no question. Uh, now, let me uh, point out a couple of other little details here. One, they've done a nice job of allowing, they've, they've milled out here and here to get your thumb into that and access that lock fairly easily, which is very appreciative. I think we've all had knives where, um, you know, the lockup is solid, there's no issue with it, but it is hard to get your thumb in there. Uh, and they kind of thought that through for us and made sure that it was easy to access. Uh, let me talk now though about the flipper. Okay, oh, by the way, I guess I should point out that it does have really nice solid lockup, okay? No issues with that. Let me now talk about, oh, the flipper and then the stop pin. Uh, so, the way this flipper is done is really, really good, okay? So you can see there's jimping right there on the back of the flipper tab, and the tab is angled a little bit up so that, well, I'll just use my finger, but you can see this is kind of indicating to me that the direction I wanna push is, is right there. So that's kind of 90 degrees to that surface. And guess what? If I put my finger on and I push 90 degrees to that surface, the knife flips really well every time. Now, I don't know why that's difficult to do, but there are so many knives where the, the jimping on the flipper tab, so here's a good example, uh, and the 0560, which I love, uh, number one, when you flip it out, you're, you're pushing right on the sharpest point of that sort of horn that's there, and the jimping is down here for what, I have no idea what reason. Like, you never actually touch that portion of the flipper either when the knife is open or closed. Uh, and, and a lot of knives, 
Uh, let me see if I can grab another example here. Here's another ZT. Uh, on this one, if I want to flip it open, you know, here's where it seems like I would push. And with a push button deployment, that is okay. Uh, but if I'm going to light switch it, I pretty much have to put my finger right on that sharp corner, which kind of sucks if you're the kind of person who's going to sit around and flip it open over and over again. So, uh, as I say, I don't know why that's difficult to figure out, but it seems like a fairly logical thing to go, hey, let's let's put a flat surface and jimping on the exact spot where a person's finger ought to go to flip the knife out well. And that's exactly what they've done here. Uh, so I will say I really appreciate that. Uh, if you want to notice that the stop pin here, there it is right there, you can see it on the blade. Uh, it disappears at the front and disappears at the back. Okay, so they've nicely kind of milled out uh, some areas in those um, titanium liners to allow that stop pin to seat in there. Let's see if I can show you that. Yeah, there you go. You can see it now how the stop pin just pops into those little grooves. So really neatly done on the stop pin. It does, of course, you can see it for a minute while you open and close the knife. And then that's about it. Uh, this weird protrusion, I'm not sure what the thought process was on that. I guess it was designed or I guess it was left there to allow for a bit of a thumb ramp and some jimping right in that location. Uh, but uh, when the knife is closed, it does look a little odd. Uh, so in terms of lockup and deployment, very well done. I mean, it's smooth as silk. It just, it's one of those knives where when you have it in hand and you're, you're using it, it just feels like quality. And, and I think if you've used any kind of quality tool or, or equipment, you, you kind of know that there's, there's a difference there where the it's just smooth and the friction is exactly perfect. Uh, the detent is dialed in exactly where you want it to be so that it's not too uncomfortable. Uh, and when it does break, the knife flips out nice and hard. Uh, so lockup and deployment, total win. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the handle. Obviously, this is where there's a lot of detail going on and where uh, the design really has some different stuff, right? You could find other knives with a similar blade shape. You could find other knives uh, with similar quality pivot and with uh, a good detent and good flipping action. Uh, there's not that many knives other than the other Decepticon models that have a handle quite like this one. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, you've got a number of layers of titanium here. You have the titanium scales there, titanium liners, a backspacer, and then the same on the other side, right? Now what's cool is the way they're all skeletonized, so you can look through and see the other layers, and in fact you can see right through the knife. Uh, that, I, you know, it's not going to be for everybody, but I think that is really, really cool. And certainly I love the name of this, the Decepticon. It really does have that sort of Transformer-esque look to it, doesn't it? Uh, so, First thing to notice is just the amount of detail. Now, one thing that I will say is this. They have designed this to give the appearance of detail and layering uh, more than actual layering. Like really, there's nothing going on here that isn't going on on any liner lock. You've got liners, a backspacer, and scales, right? However, the way they've cut them and finished them makes it look really multifaceted and like there's a lot of detail going on. So on the top scale here, you have stonewash on these angled portions, these milled portions. On the flats, it's a satin, which creates uh, an extra layer, sort of. You have this liner that's showing on both sides, which adds intricacy. Then back here on the backspacer, you can see it's cut out. So there are a lot of little things that are done here that make it look maybe more intricate and more detailed than it actually is. Now it is quite intricate and quite detailed, uh, but the, the design is specifically allow or able to uh, create an extra amount of detail or an extra amount of layering. All right, blade closed, it looks really cool. It does add an extra layer, but I, I gotta say with the blade open, that's where I find this handle really shines. So you can see all the way through, you can see all the layers and even whatever's going on behind the knife. So the detail on this is really, really cool. Uh, in terms of finishes, you've got stone wash for everything kind of under the liners, then the liners have the stone wash and the satin finish. Uh, nice big pivot screws that look really cool. And I, I do like when there's sort of just the two screws in there. It's sort of a minimalist design. Uh, and it's sort of a contrast, right? <laughs> you have this very intricate knife, but 
I think you can agree with me when, when I say that I would not have wanted to see this knife with a bunch of screws along here going into the backspacer. It would really, really detract from the design. So the way they've done this is definitely the way that it needed to be done. All right, uh, now let's, uh, by the way, just quickly, the pocket clip there is a milled, uh, they call it their Damascus pocket clip, it is milled. There's a milled hole in the, the scale here so that this kind of locks in. All the screw is doing here is holding it in and the milling in the handle is what keeps it firm. All right, by the way, this is a really well done pocket clip. Uh, I know some guys talk about uh, milled pocket clips being not that great. I have not had a single, this goes in and out of pocket really, really nicely, uh, and it's very, very comfortable. Uh, of course, single position can be a pain in the neck if you're a lefty. Uh, by the way, check out the back side of the clip. Uh, looks really cool as you see it through the handle there, right? Uh, so, uh, those are kind of all the, the features and things that are going on. Oh, one more thing that I should point out, and that is the lanyard hole back here, which is hidden. I really appreciate that. Again, it's, it's done in such a way that it doesn't take away from the artistry of the overall design. Uh, now, let's talk about the thing that probably everyone's thinking. Uh, a knife that's got all those holes in it and all those weird angles could not be comfortable, right? Well, it actually is extremely comfortable. You get this in hand and it just fits your hand really nicely. Now, there is one little complaint I have, uh, but in a, in a saber grip, it works really well. Uh, reverse grip, See if I can get my hand on camera there. I've got to turn to a weird angle. Really comfortable in a reverse grip, especially with your thumb kind of up here. Uh, so yeah, ergonomics on this are quite good. Uh, there are one, a couple little nitpicks that I've got. Number one, uh, this jimping could be a little bit proud of these liners. So uh, if I really push, I can sort of get it and it does add some, some text, some traction here. But I would kind of really have to push down, okay? Uh, that's one little thing that could have been done a little bit better. The other thing is with this top swedge, uh, you end up, it's not super thick blade stock already, and now I don't have a lot of place. You know, this is a pretty thin edge for me to put my thumb on if I'm doing any kind of hard cutting task, right? If I start pushing really hard for a long period of time on this, it's gonna get pretty uncomfortable. Uh, I would have liked to see a little bit more of a flat portion on the blade here that would allow me to hold the knife like this uh, and be fairly comfortable doing it. The way they've designed it, it's really be meant to be held more like that with your thumb back here on the thumb ramp. Uh, and that's not ideal to me. Uh, there is a bit of a, a corner right here at the tip of my thumbnail uh, that can catch your finger. It's not super sharp, but it, it's kind of there. Um, in actual cutting, I have never noticed it. I only notice it if I specifically put a finger on there or try to find it. If I hold the knife like this and do a bunch of cutting, you never touch it or notice it. All right, uh, so those are a couple little um, nitpicks that I would have uh, for the ergonomics on the knife, but otherwise very, very good. Uh, now that we've got sort of all of the details covered, let's go ahead and do some comparisons. I don't have a lot of stuff that compares well to this. Uh, one of the things that I've got to say before we get into too many comparisons is that at the price point, there's not a lot out there like this, okay? Knives of this level of intricacy, you know, you're, you're talking about GTC knives, you're talking about uh, some pretty high-end custom stuff. You don't see a lot of, you know, high-end production or mid-tech type stuff that has this amount of detail. Brian Ty would be a great example. Now, his, and his customs are fairly affordable. All right, and so I do have uh, my TIE Fighter here to compare. Uh, and this is one that does come to mind for a similar, like there's, there's a lot of deta detail here. There's a lot of intricacy. Uh, of course, this is quite a bit cheaper. Um, but if you start looking at, you know, those $500 mid techs, uh, they're very plain Jane, right? They're just two slabs of titanium with, with a, a piece of usually high-end steel shoved in there, uh, and they're selling for at least as much as this, and some of them even more. Uh, a good example would be the Talk. Now, this is the first-generation Talk. Uh, absolutely phenomenal knife. I guess even this knife makes a good comparison because even the blade, blade shape is kind of similar. Um, but a, a talk, if you if you got in on the second run of talks, you know they went for like 585, and 
compared to the amount of detail and intricacy that's going on here and the amount of artistry, uh, they're, they're not really the same. Now the Talc is a great knife and I've got to say out of the mid techs out there, I would, this is probably one of the most highly recommended ones that I can think of. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, but other more intricate uh, mid techs, like I love a lot of the stuff that Ferrum Forge does, but those knives are, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars compared to uh, this one at a little over five. So at the, you know, in terms of other competitive high-end production slash mid-tech knives, uh, there's not a lot with this level of detail. Uh, we already brought in the uh, the TIE Fighter, and Brian TIE's full customs, I would say, would have a similar amount of detail and intricacy to this. Uh, Wee Knives is another one that has, they have a lot of stuff going on, like that Dragon Scale knife the, from Wee Knives, and I, I have uh, sent an email to Vlad um, at Blades 101, and I am on a list waiting for one of those, but uh, they're, you know, they kind of remind me of the amount of detail that this is doing, and, and at a pretty good price point, but outside of that, there's not a lot. Um, Riat knives would be a good example. Now most of these are not, again, not as much detail, not as much interesting stuff happening. Uh, this one is definitely more than others. Uh, and they do have a few cool models. The, the one unnamed prototype that's circulating around a number of channels right now, uh, I would say would compare in terms of detail and, and you know, design attractiveness. Uh, and so there you go, that's a, a good example, I would think. Now, if you, you like some of these higher end things, uh, but you know the price point is a little off-putting, which is true of pretty much anyone, myself included, uh, you know, I think Wee Knives is a good option. They've got some pretty budget friendly, or I know they're expensive, but more budget friendly than a lot of other high end production. Uh, but I think ZTs are a great option. Now, this is the uh, 0452 in M390 with the blue anodization. Uh, this is a great knife, Sinkovich design. So, uh, you know, if you want something high end that has a lot of high end features, a lot of high end materials, uh, ZT is a great option. I already brought in the 804 uh, Rexford. So, again, uh, I think these knives. There you go, hold on. Yeah, so I think these knives do create a bit of a, yeah, you know, a, a unique, they hold a unique place in the market, okay, because they're offering, you know, high-end blade steels, high-end materials, really good fit and finish, uh, you know, milled clip on this one, uh, but they're much, much cheaper than uh, some of the other sort of high-end production stuff. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> So there are a few comparisons for you, knives that I think you might be interested in. Uh, but really, the, the one thing I will say about this knife is it's fairly distinctive. There are not a lot of knives that are doing anything even remotely close. Now that does mean anything that's distinctive is going to be off-putting to some, right? When you, Whenever you make something really different and, and kind of out there, some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it. That's just the nature of being a little bit different and certainly this knife is. So I imagine there's some people who look at this and go, that is about the ugliest knife I've ever seen. Well, there are other people who say, wow, I've never seen anything cooler in my life. And I'm kind of in the, the latter camp there. Uh, so overall, Great, great knife. Now, who is this knife for? Certainly it's for people who enjoy high-end production stuff uh, like I do, uh, who want something that is fairly artistic. But also, I think one of the things that these knives and others like it uh, full fit into um, are those people who are really into customs. You know, you're they're, all of their knives are like one, two, three, four thousand $4,000. They have all these super crazy expensive collection. Um, you know, and they'd want something nice to carry, but man, I don't want to carry my $3,000 GTC. Uh, so something like this, coming in at a much lower price point than most customs, gives gives you that option of carrying an extremely high quality, extremely intricate design uh, without, you know, taking a risk with your $2,000 whatever, you know. Uh, so there you go, guys. I think this is a great knife. Uh, yes, uh, it is a little more on the artistic side than most, and I know a lot of you guys as my viewers uh, definitely prefer the more standard production knives, uh, but I gotta say, I do enjoy these, and uh, I hope you at least enjoy watching them, even if you don't really plan to own any yourself. That's, uh, that's my take on the Custom Knife Factory DCPT3. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.